are the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. Other places have pro teams, but in this state, the Mountaineers are a way of life. When I competed, and more that number, I competed for the state and for the people, not just for the university. Now, let's roll out the carpet and bring on the Mountaineers. Pitts not a spree. Yes! Alexander, Robinson oh. comes back. And now, the show brought to you by Mountaineer fans, for Mountaineer fans, the Country Road Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into episode 11 of the CRW Hoops podcast as we continue to cover the 2022-2023 West Virginia men's basketball season that now sees our beloved Mountaineers sitting at 16-12 and 12 overall in the season and 5-10 and 10 in Big 12 conference play. Three games remaining in the regular season here as we look for the West Virginia Mountaineers to hopefully secure an NCAA tournament berth. And of course, they took a step in the right direction and being able to do just that with their most recent victory over Oklahoma State. We'll get into a review of that game here momentarily and also dive in on a preview of the upcoming game against Kansas as West Virginia will take on the Jayhawks in Lawrence this Saturday here. One of two road games that will happen consecutively for West Virginia, both in tough places to play. One at Kansas on Saturday, one at Iowa State on Monday. So we'll preview that upcoming game against Kansas here before we close out that episode. But before we get into our review of the game against Oklahoma State, there certainly is an interesting piece of news, I guess a rumor you could say, in regards to West Virginia basketball coaching staff in the future and how it may or may not look anyway. Uh, so certainly we want to talk a little bit about that. Very interesting rumor here. So let's dive in on that here in our Mountaineer News segment of this episode of the CRW Hoops podcast. All right, so Mountaineer News this week. I'm sure most of you guys have probably heard about this rumor already. This came out earlier this week, but it was certainly very interesting, and I wanted to take a second to address it here on the podcast because it could be potentially big for the future of West Virginia basketball. Also, it's a bit controversial due to who, who's involved, and let's just look here. This information actually originally came from the Horns 247 Sports site, which I'm sharing the article here on the video side for you guys tuned in on the video side, which real quick, if you are tuned in on the video side, do us a favor, hit that like button, give us a thumbs up on this video video to really help this video's performance and future videos performances as well and if you haven't already be sure and hit that subscribe button as it helps us helps you and helps get more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation but if you're tuning in on the audio side no worries I'll read the article along with you but if you are there on the audio side you can find it on any podcast platform you like Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts Spotify you name it just search for the Country Roads webcast but if you're on Apple Podcasts do us a favor leave us a rating that really helps but if you're on any of the other podcast platforms be sure and share us around with other West Virginia uh, fans you may know that really helps us continue to grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Having said that, this of course the coaching rumor does involve former Texas coach Chris Beard, who I think we can all agree was very successful during his time at Texas. The reason that he is no longer there, that is where the controversy of course comes in. It was a domestic violence issue. Um, he had charges against him. Texas of course let him go. The charges have since been dropped, but that's a whole nother issue. I just want to talk about this rumor right now, which are in this room here from the 247 site, it says a source close to Chris Beard said Beard had been spending some time at a house in Mississippi owned by former NBA and college coach Tim Floyd. The source also said Beard had been entertaining offers, including possibly working as a potential special assistant to West Virginia coach Bob Huggins next season. The article goes on to state here to close out. Another source close to Beard said, considering the felony charge was dropped, Beard would likely get at least one Power 5 head coaching job after this season. So this article basically is postulating that Chris Beard could end up as a special assistant for one year at West Virginia next season, and then he could likely get a Power 5 head coaching job. Very interesting stuff here. Like I said, we know Chris Beard is a good basketball coach. 
Uh, controversy aside, I'm not really going to address that because that's a whole nother uh, can of worms that I don't really want to open. But uh, coaching wise, Chris Beard's a good coach. However, I find it hard to believe that he would come to West Virginia just as an assistant, you know, for one year if that didn't involve him possibly being a head coach and waiting for Bob Huggins. But in my personal opinion, I think that this is something that you put out there because you want people to see probably, oh, he's thinking about taking on an assistant role. We could probably potentially get him as a head coach. So I think this is something you have your agent, your publicist, or whoever leak if you're Chris Beard and talking about you may be an special assistant at a well-known program, and especially with naming it as West Virginia and Bob Huggins, I'm sure most of the college basketball world knows Bob Huggins doesn't have too many seasons left. So people are probably looking at this and thinking, oh, no, West Virginia is going to end up with Chris Beard. We need to jump now before he goes there as a special assistant. So in my personal opinion, I find it more likely that this is information that was leaked in order to help Chris Beard's coaching prospects for next season so that he can maybe get a Power 5 head coaching job ahead of time and not have to be a special assistant. That's what I think is most likely with this situation rather than him actually ending up at West Virginia next season. However, if he were to end up being hired by West Virginia, then we would have to have that other discussion and open up that other can of worms as to if this was the right move with the controversy surrounding him and things like that. But right now in the rumor stage, I don't want to address any of that. I just want to say that personally, I don't think it's very likely that this happens. Uh, If it does, we can talk more about it then. But as far as this happening uh, next season for West Virginia, it's not impossible and it's not unlikely. We know that there is a relationship between Bob Huggins and Chris Beard. And also uh, we know that Pat McAfee, a former West Virginia Mountaineer, is good friends with Chris Beard. So there certainly are ties there that could make this a possibility. And the fact that it's being claimed on Horns 247 site is, you know, shows that there is at least some truth to this uh, rumor here involving Chris Beard and West Virginia. So who knows? We'll see what happens in the coming weeks, I'm sure. Chris Beard will probably uh, get a job before too long now that the charges have been dropped against him. So whether that be at West Virginia next season or somewhere else, that remains to be seen. But certainly a very interesting rumor for us here throughout Mountaineer Nation that I had to address here on this Mountaineer News segment. So let us know in the comments if you're tuning in on the video side, what are your thoughts on Chris Beard potentially joining West Virginia? Do you think that this is actual possibility of happening or do you think that it's more likely that it was kind of just put out there to potentially lead to better coaching prospects for him next season? Just let us know in the comments there. We appreciate the interaction. As I said, always trying to grow that Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Having said that, let's dive in here with our review of the game against Oklahoma State. All right, so this past Saturday, West Virginia put on an impressive performance in a must-win situation. I called it the most important game of the season at this point, and I think everyone would probably agree with that here. So I think West Virginia's performance in this game is what impressed me most due to the circumstances at hand. Just because of the fact West Virginia had their backs against the wall, they could have easily thrown in the towel and just carried out the rest of the season, went through the motions, and you know not worried about postseason play. But however, this team, if they've shown anything throughout this season, they've shown that they are very resilient, and I think they showed that again in this game against Oklahoma State when they came out with what I would say in my personal opinion was probably the best defensive performance of the season. Specifically in that first half, they really were smothering Oklahoma State defensively. Hadn't seen West Virginia play defense like that in quite some time, so was very happy to see that, and I think they're going to continue to have to play good defense like that in these final three games if they want to find a way to win a couple of them, which we think they will ultimately need to get that seven conference wins they need to potentially reach the NCAA tournament here over the final three games. So it's almost like a best of three series here over these final three games. you got to get two. But in regards to this game against Oklahoma State, West Virginia got one indeed, and they got one in a big way. 18-point win over the Cowboys, 85-67. to West Virginia honestly never had this one in doubt. Oklahoma State played a little bit better in the second half, cut into the lead a little bit, but every time it got kind of close, West Virginia was able to pull away again and ultimately secure the 18-point victory there. Looking at some of the numbers, which, like I said, if you're on the video side, you can see these alongside the screen with me. If you're on the audio side and you want to hop over and start catching the video version of the podcast, you can find it on YouTube. Just search Country Roads Webcast, or you can find it on the web at wvsportsnow.com, as we are a part of the Sports Now family of networks. I'm very thankful to them. But field goal percentage, you can see here just how good the West Virginia defense was in this game. Held Oklahoma State below 40% from the field, 38.5% while shooting 44% themselves. Three-point percentage, this is where West Virginia really did a great job, I think. Held Oklahoma State to two of 19 from behind the three-point line, one three in each half. Believe they were one of 11 in the first half, if I'm not mistaken. 
and then hit another one of eight in the second half. 10% West Virginia held Oklahoma State to from behind the three-point line. And in today's game of basketball, the way it's played, if you can hold a team to 10% from the three-point line, you're probably going to win that game more often than not, especially when you're hitting the shots like West Virginia was. We know they've been a bit of a mixed bag from the three-point line. They have some good shooters on this team, but sometimes they fall in love with a three-point shot a little too much. I thought this game was a really good balance there. Seven of 17, didn't shoot too many threes but did hit a good percentage of them at 41%. And then from the free throw stripe, we know West Virginia struggled early in the season, but since about the midway point, they've really improved their performance at the line and have done a great job with it. That continued in this game, 20-25 to for the Mountaineers, shooting 80% from the line, whereas Oklahoma State only shot 73%. Rebounds, we knew this would be an area of focus for West Virginia after they really struggled in that category against Texas Tech and is one of the reasons that they were not able to win that game. And West Virginia bounced back in this one, out-rebounding Oklahoma State 39-37, to including grabbing 17 offensive rebounds for the Mountaineers, which I thought was great. Uh, Passing-wise, West Virginia seemed to do a better job in this game as they actually had more assists than turnovers. That's something you haven't been able to say a lot this year. West Virginia ended up with 12 assists versus only nine turnovers. And if this West Virginia basketball team can keep it into single digit turnovers. They have a lot of good chances to win basketball games. We know that's been the big issue for them this season is turning the basketball over, not taking care of it. So hopefully this game goes a long way into them continuing to right that ship and take care of the basketball more and keep this turnover number down as we saw it in this game against Oklahoma State. So there's some of the standout team statistics for West Virginia. Box score wise, let's look at some of the individual standouts for the Mountaineers that helped them get this massively important victory over the Cowboys here as West Virginia is looking to close out the season and hopefully reach the NCAA tournament. I think the best job that West Virginia did was on Caleb Boone of Oklahoma State. We know that he's hurt West Virginia in the past. He's hurt a lot of Big 12 teams. Rather, West Virginia got him into foul trouble early. That continued on late. He fouled out in the game. Only finished with four points, three turnovers, and zero rebounds for the leading rebounder for the Cowboys. Got zero rebounds. I think that's the best job West Virginia did all night was on Caleb Boone, so I wanted to point that out. But as far as standout performers for the West Virginia Mountaineers, the one that I've got to lead it off with is Trey Mitchell. I know we've been kind of harping on Trey Mitchell lately as Mountaineer fans just because he was really the best player on the team. We thought early in the season, early on in Big 12 play, he was carrying the team a lot. And then here in recent weeks, he had kind of all but disappeared, I believe is the term that I used in the last episode of the CRW podcast here. So we really could have used a bounce back game from Trey Mitchell. And we got it in a crucial spot at a critical time for West Virginia. He bounces back in a big way. Great performance. Oklahoma State wasn't doubling on the block, so West Virginia did a lot of things for Trey Mitchell down there, just let him work one-on-one, and he did a great job. The play that really stood out to me, though, was when he came down the lane, I believe it was on Sports Center's top 10, with that massive one-handed slam, and that was something we hadn't really seen to this point. You know, we talk about aggressive Emmett, and we love when we get aggressive Emmett, but we really hadn't seen a ton of aggressive Trey Mitchell, and I think this game we really saw that, and man, he's a force to be reckoned with if he's playing like that all the time, so hopefully he continues to do that. But shout out to Trey Mitchell in this game, 22 points, three rebounds. And then, of course, Eric Stevenson. We know he's been really good for the West Virginia at home. And this game, that continued again, really hot from behind the three-point line, five of six from beyond the arc. Awesome performance there. Eight of 15 from the field overall, but led the Mountaineers in scoring. 23 points, also pulled down five rebounds and stole the ball away two times. Other Mountaineer and double figures, of course, was Keedy Johnson. We've talked a lot before on the podcast here about his offensive improvements That's this season. That's helped again with West Virginia, you know, down the stretch in this one. Ultimately, he fouled out late in this one, but that's okay because West Virginia had such a lead at that point that it was all right, you know, by that time. But Keedy Johnson, I think you can't say enough about Minutes on the defensive end, three steals in this game, but also added 12 points for West Virginia, three or four from the line, one or two from behind the three-point stripe, and four of eight field goal-wise in general. Great job shooting the basketball for West Virginia in this one. That's the thing that really stood out to me the most. I think, you know, over 43% from the field, over 40% from the three-point line. You needed a bounce-back game. You got it. You were hitting your shots. But I think when you accompanied that with what I believe to be the best defensive effort of the season yet for West Virginia, that's what ultimately made this team really dangerous in this game against Oklahoma State. And I think with this WVU team, it you know, it as it tends to be under Bob Huggins, defense and rebounding is going to go a long way and then finding success moving forward. So I think hopefully we can replicate this defensive performance we saw against Oklahoma State, and it wasn't a one-off because if so, West Virginia could have a very successful end of the 2022-2023 campaign. 
but there's still three games remaining in the regular season before we head into postseason play, see where the West Virginia Mountaineers will end up and see how just how much damage they can ultimately do there. But the first one of those three games is a very tough one here as West Virginia travels to Allen Fieldhouse where they will play the Kansas Jayhawks, one of the toughest places to play, not only in the Big 12 Conference, but in the entire country. West Virginia going to have their hands full. Let's see if we think they can meet the challenge as we preview the upcoming game against the Kansas Jayhawks. <laughs> All right, so next up for West Virginia, going on the road to take on the current number three ranked team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks. This one's going to be a late afternoon tip. Will be televised on ESPN if you want to check it out. Four o'clock tip there in Lawrence, West Virginia looking to have a better performance against Kansas than they had in their first meeting against the Jayhawks. Hopefully West Virginia just appeared to be completely overmatched in that one. But the bad news in West Virginia's quest there is that this Kansas team is really hitting their stride right now, more so than they were when West Virginia played them the first time. This Kansas team has currently won five games in a row and not easy competition in those five games either. That includes wins over Texas and TCU and Baylor in those five games, as well as wins over both Oklahoma schools. Whereas West Virginia has kind of been struggling as of late, two wins over their last five. Both of those wins, of course, coming at home. We know about the West Virginia road struggles, and we know that West Virginia appeared overmatched in this game against Kansas last time. However, West Virginia is coming most recently, as we just talked about, off the win over Oklahoma State. So hopefully maybe that can give you a little bit of momentum, a little bit of positive energy going into this game against the Jayhawks because – I think you're going to need all the breaks you can get if you're West Virginia. And ESPN tends to agree here, as you see on the ESPN FBI matchup predictor. They're giving Kansas an 80% chance to win versus only a 20% chance for West Virginia. And I can't really say that I blame them. This Kansas team, I think, is very talented. They've got a chance to, you know, repeat as champions. Potentially, they're going to be one of the favorites when the NCAA tournament comes around. They've been a great team all season. They still have some of the great players they had last season in Jalen Wilson, Harris, etc. They've had an amazing freshman in Grady Dick. They really are loaded across the board there at Kansas. And then when you talk about Allen Fieldhouse, that's a place that's really hard to win at. It's very rare that it happens that they lose games at home. And when you accompany that with West Virginia's struggles on the road in conference games in recent seasons, it really adds up to a tall task for West Virginia to get this win over Kansas. However, we do appear to have a very hungry West Virginia team on our hands that knows that they've got to win probably two of these final three games to be able to reach the NCAA tournament, which is their ultimate goal. West Virginia probably has that energy coming off this Oklahoma State game, but the thing is, if you do have that energy and you do come out and hit somebody in the mouth and you stick with them long enough, that's the perfect recipe for an upset, so that's definitely got to be what West Virginia is looking to do in this one, potentially. If they can, that's a whole other story. But before I give my final prediction, let's talk a little bit about how these teams match up statistically. West Virginia and, and Kansas, both almost identical in scoring average throughout the season. 76.6 for West Virginia, 76.5 for Kansas. West Virginia has given up 70.6 points a game. Kansas has only given up 68 points a game. Really good defensive efforts there from Kansas. Shooting-wise, also very close there. 45% from the field for West Virginia, 46% for Kansas. Kansas is pulling down 37 rebounds a game compared to the Mountaineers 34. Kansas is dishing out 17 assists while West Virginia is averaging 13.4. Blocks four a game for Kansas, three a game for West Virginia, and steals. Kansas averaging nearly nine steals a game. As I said, this is a really good defensive Kansas team. And West Virginia averaging six steals a game themselves. Individually, Jalen Wilson, the standout for Kansas, one of the better players in the nation, as we know. 19.9 points per game, so right at 20 points per game while shooting over 40% from the field. Also leads the Jayhawks in rebounding as he's kind of a point forward type of player, 8.5 rebounds a game. And then, of course, Harris, the guard, really talented passer, 6.3 assists per game. West Virginia, the same three faces here leading in points, rebounds, and assists that have been throughout most of the season, and that's Eric Stevenson leading you in points with 14.6 points per game, shooting over 43% from the field. Jimmy Bell continues to lead the Mountaineers in rebounds with five and a half per game, and Kedrian Johnson, the Mountaineers leader in assists with over three a game. So there's kind of the statistical matchup between these two teams. As I said, West Virginia really going to have their hands full in this game. I just don't like the way that they match up with Kansas. I think that this is a hungry West Virginia team, as I said earlier, and hopefully some of that motivation goes a long way in making up for some of the things West Virginia may lack when it comes to Jimmys and Joes, and we know Bob Huggins is good at X's and O's, so maybe that can make up a little bit of that as well. I think West Virginia comes out, starts quick, 
against Kansas, stays in the game for a good portion of it. But I think down the stretch, Kansas is just going to be too much for West Virginia. I expect Kansas to pull away for probably a six to eight point win over West Virginia, unfortunately, on Saturday. But fingers crossed that I'm wrong because, like I said, West Virginia is going to have to win this game against Kansas or this game against Iowa State, I do believe, if they want to get to the big dance at season's end. So, Tough task here, two tough road games starting here Saturday against Kansas. Toughest place to play in the Big 12, in my opinion, and one of the toughest places to play in the nation. But we know our West Virginia Mountaineers will be up to the task and we'll be ready to cheer them on and hope that they can secure this impressive upset victory over Kansas on Saturday. But let us know down in the comments your thoughts on the West Virginia matchup against Kansas as well as the conclusion of the season for West Virginia. And if you think they'll ultimately be able to reach the NCAA tournament, let us know your thoughts down below. If you're tuning in on the video version, we really appreciate the interaction, trying to continue to grow that Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. All right, so there you have it. Some coaching rumors discussed, a review of the game against Oklahoma State, and a bit of a preview of the upcoming game against Kansas as well. Getting close to the end of the West Virginia Mountaineers basketball season, just wanted to say I appreciate you guys tuning in, not only to episode 11 here of the CRW Hoops podcast, but for those of you that have tuned in throughout the season, really appreciate that. Still going to have a few more episodes left, of course, here covering basketball. Still a few more regular season games. Then we got the conference tournament, and hopefully, fingers crossed, the NCAA tournament as well. I'm really hoping hoping that West Virginia can make that because I'm looking forward to covering that here on the podcast. I've never really had a chance to do that as this is the first year that we're really trying to cover basketball extensively as well instead of just football here on the Country Roads webcast. So really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing it and we'll continue to bring you guys some coverage here as we get ready to close out this West Virginia men's basketball season. Currently seeing West Virginia sit at 16 and 12 overall and 5 and 10 in Big 12 conference play. But having said that, that will pretty much wrap us up here on this episode of the Country Roads webcast. Podcast. Be on the lookout for further content from us here in the future. Find it on YouTube. Find it on our podcast platform. Anyone that you like, just search Country Roads Webcast on either one of those two outlets there, and you can find some great West Virginia sports coverage from us as well as great West Virginia sports coverage on the web at wvsportsnow.com. Be sure to check them out as well. But let's get ready to cheer on the Mountaineers as they take on the Jayhawks. Fingers crossed they can pick up an important road win that would really be massive in securing their spot in the NCAA tournament. But regardless of the result, we'll be back here to cover it following that game here on the Country Roads webcast as we continue the CRW Hoops podcast, trying to cover this 2022-2023 West Virginia men's basketball season. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, but hopefully we're trending up at the right time here as Mountaineers. Time will tell, right? And as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, Let's go, Mountaineers. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those...